Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tuts, and today I'm going to show you how to import and export product data into Magento. And this is super powerful if you're one, moving your Magento store anywhere, or two, coming from anywhere else where you, you know, have a database export with all your products in it. This is how you can bring this stuff into Magento and have it just uh, filter right through and, you know, just get all your products in there in one fell swoop. So to get started, all we have to do is go to System, and then Import, Export, and what we're going to do first is actually export. We're going to export a CSV of all of our products. And the reason I'm going to do this is so that we have the format that we can import our products in. If you were to have no products at all, you would still get useful information. So if you have a completely empty products and you want to add all your products, still come and export the CSV. That way you know exactly what you need to work with. So um, as you can see here, it's giving you things that you want to like filter out. Uh, we don't want to filter anything. So we're just going to click continue and we're going to see a CSV download here. And I'm going to go ahead and open this in uh, Google Docs and then we'll get looking at that data. Okay, so here's our spreadsheet. Uh, and now if you have like, if you have a Mac, I know there is some sort of um, issue with Excel spreadsheets on a Mac and the way that it encodes them. So you might be getting some errors on your Mac if you are trying to, um, you know, have, have this data be entered from Excel. So that's why I actually typically just use Google Docs because I know there's no issues um, and it's something that you can just be avoided. So now we have these really long descriptions and stuff like that. Um, and here they are. Uh, so that's why these, these columns are so long and tall. But as you can see, uh, going from left to right, we have all sorts of things, starting with the SKU number, uh, the store. Um, this would be like main store. In fact, let's see if we can just see one of these ones that has a little bit less information put in. Let's scroll down here, because I know we had at least one or two where we didn't fill out a ton of stuff. Yeah, see, this is even better. So we have the SKU number. Actually, let's float this top line. I'm going to freeze this top line here temporarily. Um, freeze row one. So now we can scroll all the way down here to one that's a little bit easier to see. Um, so, okay, so this is one that we made. The SKU number is uh, 11111. That's your unique number. Uh, the store, you don't have to put anything in here because it's going to default to be the main store. The attribute is going to be uh, what type of product it is. Um, so in this case, it's a tutorial, so we're using the tutorials attribute set. If you remember, we have other ones, computer default. Keep in mind, these attribute sets have to be created before you bring in your tutorial or your products themselves. Um, type is whether it's simple, configurable. Um, as you went over in the product creation, you should know all about that. Category, again, categories need to be created beforehand. You can get a third-party module or you can even write your own to import categories, um, but it's not built into uh, Magento. So you'll have to create your categories beforehand if you have not. Uh, it's root category. Um, and this is the, uh, let's see, this is the website. Of course, everything's pretty much gonna go in the base. Uh, it's going in everything. And then as you see here, it's pretty much what's applicable for your product. The color, uh, contrast ratio is something that only had for computers. Uh, country of origin, CPU speed. You obviously wouldn't need to fill this out if you were doing uh, a tutorial. So actually, let's go ahead and add a row here. And add a row. And let's fill this information in. We can see this product actually be created. So let's start at the very uh, left and go all the way to the right. Let's delete these rows. Okay, so I'm going to have this, and the ID is just going to be uh, for sixes. I'm just not taking it seriously. And it's going to be, um, the attribute set will be a tutorials. It's gonna be a simple, and it's gonna be tutorials for our category. Our root category is going to be root catalog. Uh, product website is going to be base. And now let's just keep going over. So create it at, we don't need to fill that in. It'll fill in itself. Uh, description, uh, this was imported. Okay, and now, Okay, let's keep going over. So, let's check out this one. Um, uh, this is like enable, 
Google checkout per product, you can do that, sure. Um, this can be an MP4. This also format has to be one of the options because we only have limited options. So you're gonna get an error if you throw up something weird there. Um, and now let's keep going over. Um, it does not have any options, so we need to put a zero, which stands for no. Let's keep going over. As you can see, the, the fields that have nothing in here are pretty much ones that you won't need to fill in unless you have to for that particular product, like megapixels memory. So you can just skip over those. Our meta description, um, I'm just going to put imported so we can see this when we check it out. Again, this stuff, if you don't have it in here, it's just going to import blank. Um, use config. Basically, we don't want to change any settings for this. Um, and this is the name, so we're just going to have this be imported. Um, sure, we'll do block info after column, just because that's how we have it. Price is going to be $50. Um, and as you can see, there's a whole ton of options, pretty much everything on your site. Um, this is required options, none. Keep going. Short description, um, imported. Here, basically, you have your image. So the way that you import images is let's actually check out our project structure. So I'm just going to browse to that really quick. OK, so in here, uh, we have a folder that is media in your project. And what you're going to do is put your images that you need to import in this media. And then we need a folder called import. So if we create one, import. Uh, you'll want to put your images in this folder, and if you just have the image name right here um, as, let's say, slash image dot jpeg, um, then when you import it, it's going to find this image, it's going to know what to do, and it's going to put it in the right place in your file structure. Um, that's not something we'll get into in this one. Uh, if you're having problems importing your files, I will make a dedicated tutorial to that because, you know, it's not crazy difficult, but you know, if something goes wrong, it's always nice to know. If anything, you might just want to do a quick search for whatever error you're getting, but uh, you just need to create an import folder and have your image name in there and let it go. So status, one is going to be enabled, zero is going to be disabled. We want it to be one, zero for text status. And thumbnail, same thing, we can have a different picture. URL key, imported, URL path, I'm just making this blatantly obvious um, exactly what it is. If you don't fill in this, it's going to just generate itself. Um, I'm just going to copy a lot of these settings. So uh, you'll just have to look up at the top and see exactly what they are. But it's pretty straightforward. Um, and you can, if you already have data in here for these, you can look at them. Uh, none of this stuff is necessarily, you know, uh, necessary. These are just sort of configuration options. We have like, uh, you know, whether it's using the configuration, the default configuration for things, which for the most part we want to do. This one, if it's in stock, yes, we want it in stock. Um, like I said, I'm just sort of copying these examples, the ones that are already here. But um, this doesn't really matter because uh, if you need to edit any of this stuff later, you always can. Or maybe you might want to build a product um, exactly how you want it in your site before you do your import, then copy it from that. Do your export and then copy it from that. That way you just have these settings to know exactly what you want them to be. Um, otherwise, zero equals uh, no, one equals yes, and then you can sort of look up what they are and determine what that answer needs to be. So I'm going to keep going over. As you can see, this goes on for a long time. Um, there's all sorts of stuff in here. Um, keep going. So what I'm going to do, so we're not re-importing all this stuff, is I'm just going to delete all this other data we have in here, just so I'm only importing the new stuff. Let's just delete these rows. If you need to update your stuff through that, you can actually do it that way too. But let's just go ahead and um, export this. I'm going to download this as a CSV because that's what you need to upload. And now we're going to go back to Magento. So now what we're going to do is go to System and then Import Export. We're going to click Import. Um, now, it's telling us our total uh, size of uploaded files must not exceed 32 uh, megabytes. That's fine. We're not uploading anything. So our ent entity type is going to be products. 
our import behavior is going to be append complex data because we just have this, um, you know, these products that we want to append to the products we already have. We're going to go ahead and select our CSV, and you want to check this check data. This is going to look over it to make sure that you have no problems. So this is saying checked rows 1, checked entries, invalid rows 0, total errors 0. Well good, we only have one row anyways, so um, having zero errors on that row is a good thing. And now it's saying your file is valid. To start import, press the import. If your file was invalid, it would not let you import. So let's click this import. It's going to go ahead and import our product. And now it's telling us that our index is uh, not up to date, so let's go ahead and re-index this data. Uh, i got to select all first. Submit. Okay, our data is now indexed. Now let's check out our catalog. Let's go to Manage Products. As we can see right up here at the top is our imported product. It's the latest one. It has a price. It has our quantity, everything that we had in there from the CSV. So you can dive more into that and see if you have to import a lot of products. Just make sure that you have your fields. And like I said, um, maybe create a test product in your uh in your catalog, create a product as you would like to see your products be imported and then model that in the CSV. Either way, this is a pretty powerful way to import products if you have lots of them and you need to get them in here. Okay? So, as always, this is Scott with Level Up Tuts. If you have any questions, leave a question or comment in the comment section or hit us up at Twitter at Level Up Tuts or my Twitter is at S. Tolinsky. Okay? Great. Thanks for watching. Bye.